before I really get into this tutorial, there's a few things I want to point out. I don't normally put tutorials on this channel except for this software, so don't subscribe expecting more tutorials like this. Secondly, if you're already familiar or just looking for a particular thing to understand in the software, I have all the sections divided in the description and you can just skip to whatever you need to if something is useless to you or you already know it. So just getting that out of the way. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the basics of Moolab 6. Um, if you look over here on the left, uh, I believe that this is what will show up as soon as you download the demo version. Um, uh, first thing you want to do is go and click Moolab, go into audio setup. This will stop the audio engine. Click yes, okay. Um, leave it as MME audio output and then put, make sure it's either on your speakers or your Microsoft Sound Mapper. Uh, I should point out this tutorial is specifically for PCs and not Macs because, well, I mean, I don't have a Mac, so I have to stick to this. So. <laughs> um, the other thing is if the audio on, on the Windows is not working, you could also go into audio setup and uh, switch it to ACO. Now, your computer is not normally going to have ACO. Uh, you'll have to go to a website for that, uh, for which I'll put a link in the description. Um, and it should be able to find it uh, just in your download folder. Um, so yeah, you would select ACO and then you would click on the name of the driver uh, and then just click OK. But otherwise, for right now, I'm just going to use uh, what's already here. That sh should It should prompt you for that on startup, so I don't even know if you had to do that at this point so it starts off in the edit tab as you'll notice there are three tabs compose edit modular so if you look at compose uh, here are the different channels and uh, well here are the sequences where your your compositions will be in um, and then you go into let's say you go into edit and we go into our drum rack you will see our drum sequence here which I can play real quick let me turn on the volume make sure it's not too loud that's a very uh, crude uh, composition but I was just as an example um, so and then you've got modular over here uh, I wouldn't mess with that unless you uh, get more experience otherwise just stick to compose and edit because that will pretty much manage itself for the most part um, so uh, the first couple of things you want to do are go up over here and click tempo and that's how fast it is if you're not familiar with music so the higher that is the faster your music will be so right now I put I put it at 240 which is it's nor it starts as 120 and you'll notice if I put it at 120 which is half the speed So, uh, and, and uh, the tempo is BPM, which is beats per minute, uh, and that's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go back into edit and explain how to compose some music. Uh, so as you go from left to right, that's the progression of time. So you'll notice the bar is hitting those notes as it goes from left to right. Lower and higher is different, is different notes. So all the way across, see this little shaker? If I click here, 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 it will always be a shaker. So that's, so, you know, the x-axis left to right is time. The y-axis up to down is different notes. In this case, for the drum set, different drums. Because if I go down into Space Journey, which is a, a synth that it has already open, it's different notes. So, you know, if I were to make a chord progression, So now I will show you how to pick an instrument and maybe add some effects. Uh, first thing I should mention is that if you have the demo version, you're only going to be able to have four channels. Uh, that includes instruments and effects, because you'll notice you have the I like Moog here. And then you have its uh, filter rack, so if you ever had like a filter or a, like a secondary effect. So if you go down here, you have this you have this uh, rack associated with this channel here, so Moodrum is there. I don't want to change that right now, we'll just leave that 
um, but if we click on double click on space journey and we click there um, you'll notice under factory presets you've got effects and instruments which are primarily what you're going to be using if you go into instruments uh, let's let's look for a lead um, I mean really it's up to you what you want to use uh, I couldn't I couldn't give you any guidance on that because that is your choice so I don't know I'll just go with something random like that so I mean we've kind of got some composition going there if you go down here you'll notice you have the volume control so if I put it higher um, I mean obviously it's gonna be louder and you notice how it's turning red right there that means it's I think that means it's uh, clipping which means it's too loud so if you have a if you have a point where it is it is reaching red either here in the master which is all the instruments combined you can either use the master volume to change it to adjust it to make sure it doesn't go in the red because you do not want red that ruins the quality once you actually mix down the audio as like a regular uh, wave file or you can change the volume of the individual notes and here comes a uh, note selection which is different in Moolab 6 from the other ones and which is partially why I'm doing this video uh, so you gotta press shift to deselect the one and then you can just keep holding down shift you don't have to re-click shift oh that's my fire alarm which is kinda weird okay so what you do is you hold down shift and then you can select all of them or you can Deselect all of them and just select one, and you can change that individual node's volume. The thing I should mention is that for some reason, some synths you can't change their individual note volume. I'm not really sure why. I think it might be because they're older styled synths, and you know you couldn't do that back then. I don't know. Um, I, I really have no idea why that is. But uh, otherwise, uh, you can just change the master volume on that instrument. Another thing about composition I should mention is you'll see this yellow line over here with the arrow pointing back uh, that is the loop end locator which basically decides in compose what point it's going to repeat so you notice it's not repeating at all so if I move this forward to a whole uh, phrase I guess uh, you'll notice it repeats over and over <laughs> Uh, so I mean that's that's just called looping and that's that's pretty straightforward I mean you can move that around however you want and then uh, there's another function of looping which are these and these do not actually affect your composition this is just for sake of listening to something over and over uh, you'll notice this uh, the loop is currently activated so if I want to loop a certain section so I don't have to like keep uh, you know clicking back and quote unquote rewinding well you'll notice that if I click play here it'll keep playing that section over and over you know, if you really want to be attentive to a certain section, um, or if you don't want it, you know, repeating, you want it to keep going, you can just turn it off and turn it back on, you know, do whatever you want there. If I go into Vintage Echo, click on that, double click on that, um, you'll notice that there are all these uh, controls. And if you're not familiar with any of the meme, uh, you could toy around with them. It's pretty easy to determine what a particular effect is, or if it even takes any effect based on the modular section um, it's pretty straightforward and you'll notice this green dot here that'll be under any effect or or any instrument if you turn it off if you turn something off then it won't you know you notice you didn't hear it there uh, but if you turn it back on I guess I, this would be a time to use loop uh, so if I start playing it you'll notice the echo turned off so you can still have it there without deleting it, but just temporarily turn it off or turn it back on. Um, and if I click on the selection, it's, 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 it's exactly the same as changing an instrument. You go in there, and I could go into effect. Um, oh, I don't want to go into devices. Sorry, factory presets. You basically want, basically want to stick to factory presets. And there's all kinds of effects in here, some more advanced than others. Other, otherwise, uh, most of them are pretty straightforward. Actually, I could go into devices. Let's just say I want to use move verb right now. So 
So, uh, yeah, you can basically mess around with that however you want. Now I will show you how to create a sequence, which is what one of these are. Um, so what you do is you hold down shift and you'll notice this pencil mark and you can make that as short or as long as you want. And of course, um, you can always adjust it even after you've made it. You know, it's not permanent. Now, what you'll notice what happened there is you see this black line, um, which is the same black line over here, which means if you create a sequence, a loop is going to automatically set itself to the end of that sequence when you first create it. So if you want to change that, you can and just extend it or you can totally remove it. What you do is to delete a sequence, you hit control and you'll notice an eraser mark on the top right corner of the sequence. So you can move the mouse to the corner and then holding control, click. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can do the same thing there to, to delete an individual note. Uh, you can hit control and then just delete. Another thing I would like to point out is the uh, metronome here. Uh, it taps on every beat, just like a normal metronome. Another thing that you can do is use the functions on these um, channels. There's the M and S. M stands for mute, so that'll mute that channel. Or S is single, or solo, not single, solo. Um, and it auto-mutes the other ones, but if I do that, it'll unmute the others. And you can do that with any one of these. Okay, so let's say you've reached a point where you want to save it, and that's pretty straightforward. You'll just go into the session, click Save As. I've already saved it as that. Now, you click a uh, folder here, and what I do is I usually just go to Desktop because that makes it easier to find what I want. Because otherwise, I gotta go through like program files or whatever. And what I like to do is like I sometimes I like to create a folder somewhere maybe in my music, which I've already done. Okay, so when I create that folder and I want to use that one and not have to search for it every time, I just click on the smiley thing and click Add as a favorite folder which in previous versions I've already done. I'll go ahead and do that now. Um, but then when you click on it, you can click on go, go favorite folder and then just click there. And that makes life a lot easier. And you know, you know how the rest of saving works. Okay, so let's say you've reached a theoretical point where you have finished your composition and you are ready to show the world or just at least create a draft. Um, what you wanna do is, is you wanna you know click and select the specific sequences that you want to use because let's say you don't want to use this one I'll uh, hit shift and then click that one or or let's say I've got a bunch of other sequences over here that are just extra and I don't want to use them I want to make sure that I specifically select the sequences that I want otherwise it'll create everything in your project in an audio file what I do now now that I've got selected what I want which is everything what you want to do is to make this a complete export composition as an audio file which is different from the last one it used to be mixed in audio and that's why it took me a stupid amount of time to figure that out um, and I, I'll go ahead and just do that on the desktop because it doesn't really matter um, and video example uh, it's not crucial what you name it I mean that really is a matter of preference uh, you'll notice there's two options consumer quality and production quality you can't do production quality um, and just so you know, consumer quality, the consumer quality mixed down sounds is, is still high quality. So yeah, you can go ahead and mix that down. So if I go to my desktop, you'll notice it's right there. I'll open that up. And it plays. Which is nice because in previous versions, uh, you had to close Moolab because you had to use the ACO driver. Oh, sorry. So, uh... Now that I've shown you most of the basics, I want to get into uh, equalization and compression, which are probably two of the most commonly used filters you're going to want to use. Uh, so if we play this back, let's just play the drums. I don't know if you can hear it through the microphone, but it, it is a little bit flat. So I'll click it on one of these empty slots and I will go into oh, not not devices. Okay, so effects, filters, four band EQ with saturation. That's a little more complicated, but we'll go into this. So 
uh, basically these are different ranges so this is lower these are more mid and these are higher um, so if I start playing it and I'll put this on a loop you notice if I put it all the way up you can kind of hear it change quite a bit so that made the bass go up really high but then if I do this that puts the highest pitch up really high and basically what I always do is, is I toy around with that until I get the sound that I want and that's how equalizers work and there's all different kinds of equalizers and and you you'll notice the effect that they're taking as you mess around with them uh, you could change to a saturation which is a little bit different but if when you hear it for yourself you'll you'll notice the difference and that will really be up to you and you can use the equalizers or or compression on a individual instrument or you can use it on all of them via the master and it'll auto attach all of that through uh, the modular section so you don't really have to worry about that. Let's say I want this M303 to be relatively loud but I don't want it to overpower my drums which is not which is like the opposite of the normal but um, uh, what I would do is I would go into you know another slot amplifier Okay, so compressors are an amplifier. I normally just took the regular compressor. So, as you'll notice, you've got your compression ratio. You know, if it's if it's if it if compression's one to one, then it's not really doing anything. Um, otherwise, if the higher the the higher the ratio, the more compression there is. So the other instruments, like the drum, are affecting this instrument so that it doesn't it doesn't ever overpower the other instrument. So if you want, like, let's say I want M303 to be loud, but I don't want it to overpower other things or, or muddy the sound, I will put in compression. Now sometimes you don't want to put in too much compression because it can just make something too quiet. So, you know, like let's say I put the threshold You know, you notice how the threshold and the compression can affect how loud it gets, which is essentially what it does. But in certain areas of the of the of the sound, it brings it down. Um, and again, you know, this is one of those things that you can just mess around with, uh, and you you will notice what it's doing as you're doing it. At, at least if you have a you really pay attention with your ear. Okay, so that's how compressors and equalizers work. And ultimately, the the, the real way you're going to understand how to use them is messing around with them and reading about it. If you want your music to sound nicer, equalizers and compressors are crucial. Uh, otherwise, uh, music theory, uh, that is, I'm not going to cover music theory because that is a detailed subject and there are other way better people who could explain that. As far as I'm concerned, that's it. Here are a few samples of what I've been able to get out of Moo Lab, and I'm sure anyone else could too.